this computer there and now it's recorded. Okay, so what we're going to cover are uh, the highlighted so sections uh, in a research thesis proposal, uh, principally looking at the green highlight, uh, so statement of problem, uh, how that leads to the significance of the research and also uh, how thinking about its significance can be productive in uh, the way you formulate your research objectives and questions. Uh, the rest, I mean, I can, we can talk about this some other time. Uh, we're going to look at this and then uh, consider the possibility of adding this other section down here, uh, meaning spelling out your chapter outline and conclusion as a way to sort of like reinforce some of the things that you're thinking of in this section. And finally, really only entertain how do you then sort of think about the introduction and background. So rather than think of the introduction and background as something that you do initially, perhaps this is something that you can do uh, all the way at the end uh, and as something, the last sort of like component of your uh, thesis research proposal, right? Uh, okay, so uh, important to remember is that uh, have, you probably have a thesis topic in mind and a lot of uh, students sort of like come into the proposal with a thesis topic in mind, but actually during a proposal presentation, what we really want to get a sense of is not your topic, but actually what is your thesis. So uh, a, boss, a topic itself is not really a thesis in the sense that it's not some, it's not just about an issue that you want to talk about. Oh, it's not just a sort of like subject that you want to talk about, right? Or <clears throat> or uh, a mere description of what you will discuss in your essay or what you plan to sort of like do. Uh, that's really simply declaring what your topic is. It doesn't allow us to understand or see how your research project is achievable or not. Uh, and what are the issues that you really want to discuss. So typically in weak theses, uh, you get a sense that it's really just an announcement of the topic and then also a declaration that you will want to sort of like do this, you will want to sort of like do that, I will sort of like do this, right? And then it makes uh, sometimes uh, there are, uh, because it, there is no sort of like solid anchor to a specific uh, design plan, uh, sometimes it can sound unreasonable or outrageous, right? Or it, it, it only sort of like takes a very narrow perspective on the topic. Uh, so, uh, 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 or, or it can simply be something that just reinforces uh, your point of view without actually discussing or uh, surveying other points of perspective uh, or, or making some, a statement that is too broad or too general, right? Uh, so I think when you sort of like um, having identified a topic, which is not the hard thing to do, I think a lot of, uh, 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 most of you are curious about certain things and so you want to sort of like explore certain uh, artworks or uh, buildings or sort of like object of study. Uh, I think the next question you really need to ask is what do you want to say about it? And an effective thesis statement really is something that makes a point or discusses an issue related to the topic itself. Uh, what it doesn't do is simply to list out the main points that you want to discuss, but really bring all those points together into a large arguable central idea. And we'll talk about what an argument is in this context, yeah. Uh, 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 but uh, maybe uh, uh, these are sort of like broad things to think about is that uh, you should also, as you think of your argument, uh, anticipate uh, the reader's expectation, address potential counter arguments and objection, uh, and also try to see if you can uh, find a different way to uh, understand the topic, right? Uh, uh, actually, some of the most interesting research are the ones that really problematize what we understand about a particular topic and offer a new way to look at the, the, the problem. Uh, so uh, uh, a good exercise to always have is, uh, a, a good exercise in, in this regard is to always sort of like think of uh, be, be, be conscious or be alert of things that you find strange or paradoxical or, or problematic about an issue or even sort of like unique or, or interesting to unpack, right? So whenever you hit those sort of like moments, 
those sort of like complexity, those sort of like roadblocks where you can't think around that particular issue. Uh, I, I think those are actually some of the most productive moments for me. Uh, that's when I want to actually sort of like ask uh, and explore uh, the issue further. Okay, uh, so uh, very quickly, this is a sort of like argument that gives you a research direction. Um, so uh, maybe it's easy to, easier to sort of like um, uh, 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 a defined a thesis for what it is not. So the two weakest sort of ways in which uh, people have normally organized the thesis is really to simply dump information into it. So if it's just a pile of information and I have this student who's like really just throwing all the information that he has found on uh, 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 an artifact, right? Uh, and he would be very met, uh, methodical in, you know, going out there, interviewing people, collecting all these sort of like information around the artifact. But it's the thesis is really just uh, a dumping ground for all this information. Uh, and uh, what it, he does is it's very good descriptive summary, but it doesn't offer comment. It doesn't analyze what this information means. It doesn't sort of like structure them in a way that becomes uh, that addresses an issue that he wants to explore. So uh, that, in that sense, then it's weak because it, 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 those kinds of research then doesn't show him doing the active, uh, playing an active role in actually interpreting the material that he has received. He's, uh, you could say that he's like an archivist or a cataloger or simply an inventorist, right? Why do you need to sort of like write it in 80,000 words when you can just as well create an archive or, you know, create a digital archive or use other forms to inventorize uh, uh, that kind of knowledge if it's simply sort of like descriptive. Uh, uh, so when you write a thesis, maybe it's uh, one good thing to think about is maybe uh, you need to think of what is the exclusive, uh, you know, insight that you hope to gain uh, about your research topic that you want to say about it. So let's compare, for example, uh, you know, uh, 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 this. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's let's compare, for example, this um, uh, these two sort of like uh, uh, pieces statement here. Uh, so now A says something like, um, by telling the story of Wesley and Buttercup's triumph over evil, the princess bride affirms the power of true love. And then uh, a, a second example suggests that although the main plot of the princess bride rests on the natural power of true love, an examination of the way that fighting sticks, baseball bats, tree branches, and sword link, the frame, frame the, uh, Although the main plot of the princess bride rests on the natural power of true love, an examination of the way that fighting sticks, baseball bats, tree branches, and sword link the frame story to the romance plot suggests that the narrator's grandson is to be trained in true love. That true love is not natural, but socialized. But socialized. Uh, so it, it's not simply, I guess, just an elaboration of um, you know, uh, what you want to say about a particular topic. Uh, more than that, uh, I think it's that you're saying something that is exclusive to your topic. If you look at example A here, uh, something like, you know, Wesley's uh, and Buttercup sort of like, the story of Wesley and Buttercup's triumph over evil uh, and the book's ability to affirm the power of true love, that can be applied to a lot of stories. Right, uh, it can be applied to a lot of different things in a lot of different contexts. So you're not saying something, you're not providing any new insight uh, into uh, the Princess Bride uh, as a text or as a novel, as a work of art itself, or, or the interesting thing that it has to say to you. Uh, so trying to sort of like find that uh, exclusive insight is the struggle that you have to undertake in your research. 
Uh, and part of the struggle, I think, is uh, related to uh, one's ability to identify the problem statement. The problem statement can take many different forms. So it can come from, I guess, a deduction, something that you, you uh, maybe a theoretical sort of like position that you're interested in, or you are interested in thinking through, uh, such as, for example, the easiest is like, you know, gender, right? If you have, uh, if you're informed by gender or critical race theory, then you would have something you want to work or be in com a theory that you want to be in conversation with. So how does, the, how do you sort of like use your uh, uh, case study or your topic in a productive way uh, that can help answer certain questions uh, within the theoretical sort of like framework. Uh, uh, or you can also, I guess, uh, uh, um, you know, identify a problem statement uh, through exploring interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary perspective. So here uh, you would sort of like, I guess, scope vastly across different disciplines, maybe borrowing from, uh, uh, you know, if say in our history, I wouldn't even think of like anthropology as something that is very interdisciplinary, but I might think of, uh, I don't know, economics uh, as offering different set of interdisciplinary tools and perspectives that can perhaps change the way I understand, uh, you know, uh, 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 maybe Malaysian art uh, in the 1950s and drawing on these sort of like, uh, 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 interdisciplinary perspective, you might identify sort of specific problems that art history as uh, an approach to understand Malaysian art in the 1950s might not uh, immediately identify as a problem. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, a problem statement could also sort of like, you know, it can come from insights from the discussions with practitioners in the field itself. So talking to specific people, how they sort of like frame or remember certain issues uh, could lead you to uh, understand that there is something that to be sort of like discussed here. Uh, and it can also stem from critical reflection uh, on personal experiences or a really thorough review of the relevant literature, which is what we normally sort of like recommend to students. Like if you want to know about a topic, you have to go through uh, you know, I do a thorough review of the literature. So none of these are sort of like exclusive uh, uh, to each other. Uh, really, uh, in, I guess when you are trying to identify a, a problem statement uh, to develop a thesis out of, you're really working uh, from uh, any one of these sort of like uh, 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 approaches, right? Uh, so uh, in a problem statement, what you try to do is you state your problem. Uh, uh, I think you also remember uh, it's uh, crucial to also state what the knowledge gap is, uh, whether the study agree with previous studies, it disputes previous research attempts or to replicate earlier study or disprove it or introduce new concept. Uh, and you, be, you can be very specific about what you're trying to do. And the more specific you are, I think it's clearer also to the reader, the extent of your grasp of the field itself. Uh, and it's your understanding of uh, the topic in relation to what, how other people have sort of like framed uh, uh, the topic, right? Uh, uh, and it really sort of helps to situate your study within uh, a particular sort of like field itself. Uh, giving reason why, you, uh, why you're studying to so also this particular area. Uh, uh, I think uh, in the problem statement itself, it's also good to um, specify the context, the time, the institution, environment, etc., in which your study takes place. Uh, uh, it can be done here or it can but be done earlier, but sometimes uh, uh, we have recently been receiving a lot of PhD proposals for some reason where students just say like, I want to study uh, things like color painting, painting, uh, color theory in painting. And when we ask them, you know, what paintings or what decorative sort of like art forms you're referring to, they can't even name uh, like an actual concrete object that they want to look at. Uh, and it becomes very difficult at a PhD level when you're asked to go deep into the topic that you don't even have an idea of what is the actual thing that you want to look at. 
it's a, a very abstract concept uh, that, that you want to work on. You, sure, you can work on this idea of color theory in, in, in painting, but uh, you would ultimately seem to draw on specific examples. And so having an awareness of what is the exact example that you will draw on and already spelling them out uh, in your proposal presentation is crucial because that demonstrates uh, the achievability of your research. And that is what you're assessed on. Nothing else. Uh, at the proposal stage, what you need to sort of like uh, convince the readers is that your pro research is not whether it's correct or not. It's not whether it's even like, uh, 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 you know, you're, you can, you know, your thesis is actually sort of like valid or not. It's not a question of validity. It's a question of the feasibility of your research project. And that's all they are looking for. Okay. Uh, uh, problem statements then uh, should lead you to consider what the research of significance, the significance of your research is. Uh, I, I found this thing online that suggests that we can think of the significance of research this way. Uh, so very often, I guess in arts and culture, we tend to fall back on uh, uh, this idea that, oh, because we are documenting sort of like heritage, uh, a national heritage or a local sort of like heritage, it is self-evident that it is important or it is significant. Uh, it might be to you and it might be for the community, but it's not necessarily evident for most people in, 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 the, in the world, right? Uh, and in fact, most people don't find this significant at all, what we do significant at all. So I think you need to, uh, 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 I think you need to persuade, then find a way to persuade other people to see your research in a different light. Uh, so uh, there's this uh, suggestion uh, that I sort of like found online where you can think of how you're building a thesis uh, as, on architectural sort of like terms, right? As if you're sort of like uh, creating a building itself. So uh, on, on level one, on the ground floor itself, what you do is try to lay out uh, all the sort of like facts. Uh, first, you, you, you have to be familiar with the complex. You have to have the foundations, right? Uh, so all the problems are sort of laid out and uh, the description of the situation is thoroughly and accurately sort of like conveyed to the reader. Then on the second level, what you try to do is then to formulate insight and an arguable sort of like point uh, to help animate your analysis. And this is often the part that is, I guess, what good thesis is about. Like, this is where, I, this is the meat of your thesis, right? The strength of your thesis really centered on rest. It really rests on your argument. Uh, but I think the third part is where I, you would try to make an attempt to connect your research with uh, a larger field of study or with greater or more significant kind of like life question, right? Uh, uh, beyond the particular topic or case itself is how, what is the implication of you having to, having, having this perspective on a particular topic? Uh, how does it change the way we understand uh, even like uh, arts, the, uh, the arts and culture itself? Or, or arts in relation to society, arts in relation to life, these, or arts in relation to pedagogy, or how do, how do we think about the teaching of arts, or, or, or museum culture in general. All these things, I think, uh, can be addressed in the significance of research. Uh, but to, to address this, I think you probably have to uh, have a, you need to be willing to sort of like ask more abstract and philosophical questions. Uh, and think that is the hardest thing for us to do and to, and, and to ask these questions in a confident way, right? Uh, uh, don't be afraid to be tentative in how you, have, how you phrase uh, or express yourself in the thesis. I think it's fine. A lot of people say you have to be assertive. You have to be, you know, definitive and things like that. And you, uh, you shouldn't be vague, that's for sure. And you should be specific. But uh, 
when it comes to sort of like, you know, more existential kind of like question, don't be afraid to sort of like pose it as a sort of like question uh, 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 and recognize the uncertainty or the ambiguity of like the answers that you might be uh, trying to work through. I think being honest uh, about that is, uh, and, 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 and being sort of like visible about that honesty it's okay. I, for me, I think it's okay. And it makes actually uh, a thesis much more uh, enjoyable to read because it demonstrates that you are thinking through a set of questions and problems that you hope to use the thesis as a platform to work through those problems. Uh, so it's okay to sort of like uh, 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 incorporate some of these sort of like, uh, uh, you, uh, I, I think it to include uh, how you uh, some of the larger sort of like uh, questions are uh, about why you think your thesis or your research matters to the world uh, in the significance of research rather than relying on sort of like formulaic kind of like answers. Uh, don't fall back on formulaic answers only because they don't actually say a lot about why you're doing this. You know, you're going to spend two years at least on most of you, if you're doing PhD, then three or four years on this project. So why are you spending four years on this project? Maybe your life goal is ultimately to land yourself in a cushy job, uh, working in uh, an academic institution and teaching for the rest of your life. Sure, but you know, uh, if you ask yourself more deeply why you're planning to sort of like do, you're, you're willing to sort of like go through these four years to sort of like uh, struggle for even that position, I think uh, maybe you'll find the significance of sort of like your research and, and bring those sort of like narrative into this section of your thesis proposal. Okay. Uh, so uh, normally, typically, when uh, in you can uh, when uh, it's uh, remember, uh, I've always suggested that uh, perhaps writing in uh, writing using the topic sentence is something that uh, that. Uh, can more easily sort of like convey in, uh, what you're trying to sort of say to, uh, to the reader, right? Uh, and uh, similarly, you know, uh, at some point in your thesis, and it's, it's not fixed uh, where you should sort of like include a thesis statement, but at some point in your thesis, you should have a thesis statement. This can come, for example, either in uh, the significance, whether at the end of your problem statement, beginning your significance of research or somewhere within the significance of research, or even stated clearly at uh, the research objectives, right? Uh, so it doesn't really matter where you put it, but at some point, I guess you need to strongly assert or make it clear that you have a thesis statement, that you're stating that, okay, this is uh, the the, the argument that I want to make. Uh, there is this formula, so I, I, I'm a very empty formula, but then there is this formula that's actually quite good, and it's, uh, you know, people call it the magic thesis statement. Uh, and you can sort of like, you know, uh, uh, use this formula here and adjust this uh, to your own research context and think about uh, how this can perhaps then be applied uh, put meaningfully to your research, right? Uh, so typically, it begins with by looking at da, 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 we can see da, 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 which is most readers don't see, and it's important to look at this aspect of the text because da, 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 da. so it's uh, it's a way to sort of like spell out what your topic is, uh, what you want to sort of things that you want to sort of like focus issues that you want to focus on, and then the justification of why it's important to sort of like look at those things. Uh, so if we go back to our example of the Princess Bride, uh, you'd see that again, if you were to simply sort of like spell it out uh, using example A, then it really doesn't sort of like uh, tell, tell us very much about why this is important to understand the power of true love uh, through the story of uh, Wesley and Buttercup's triumph over evil and the Princess Bride. Whereas in uh, uh, the example B, I think it, it, it captures some of this, uh, 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 some of these sort of like criteria, right? First, it actually uh, identifies a specific issue. Uh, then, 
that we can see. And then, uh, you know, it spells out the topic and then identifies a specific issue and then ultimately also makes the justification. Uh, so you can try and see if this is something that uh, could, can help you to think more about your thesis more clearly. And people use this in various configuration uh, in order to uh, make a more compelling case line in their thinking, make their thinking more sort of like visible. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the context, in the thesis, the, an argument is made or advanced is uh, uh, how, what an argue, how we define an argument is that uh, you, you really need to sort of like take a position on the subject you're discussing and support the position with evidences. So it's not enough to just sort of like state your opinion or say what you think uh, or, or how you, what you feel, uh, but uh, this feeling or this thinking, and it's okay to feel, I think uh, we, we forget feeling is a very important component to, uh, to doing research. Or, or compelling us to sort of like ask specific set of questions or identify specific issues and, and developing, you know, very interesting uh, ways of understanding a topic. It's really through feeling our way through things. And, and, and most of the time it's, it's combination of both sort of like feeling and thinking that gets us to, uh, 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 get, gets us through our research, right? Uh, so so don't, don't be afraid to sort of like feel uh, feel your way through as sort of like an argument, but whenever an argument on an opinion is sort of like advanced, uh, and you definitely need to advance an argument and an opinion in your thesis, you are taking a position that needs to be supported by evidences. And evidences here can be really a lot of different things. You know, any quotations that you make, any paraphrasing, any sort of summary, any excerpt, a large chunk of, of text that you you pull out from, uh, you know, a, a, a 19th century sort of like diary and, and plonked it there. Uh, you know, you can use statistics, you can use charts, you can use images, photographs, anything you want as evidences. Uh, but more important is that you need to guide your readers through the interpretation process rather than, uh, uh, rather than assume that the evidences are self-evident. Uh, Evidences don't speak for themselves. So whenever you introduce something, you must say why and how this evidence supports your argument, link the evidences to your argument. And without making the link clear, you're simply listing information and readers cannot read your mind. Uh, they cannot make that connection. You have to assume they cannot make that connection. It's not clear to everyone your thinking process. And even though you structure it as a flow, uh, unless you sort of like make that connection explicit, uh, uh, you, we, we, we just simply cannot assume that people understand, uh, right? Uh, so uh, always let's work on the assumption that all these connections are never clear to everyone. And, and, and at least this is, uh, and, and that's why uh, elaboration and sort of like linking of evidences to arguments is important because then it uh, spells out very clearly how they are connected. Uh, and when you're thinking about evidences, maybe some of the things that you can think about are listed here. I can share with you the slides later. So I don't wanna sort of um, go too much into detail, only to say that these are some of the questions that you can actually uh, think about uh, when you're thinking of incorporating an evidence into an argument and how the evidence can, uh, wh what kind of evidence you should choose in order to support that argument, okay? So these are some of the things that you should, can think about. Uh, then uh, finally, how that, uh, how, uh, once you sort of like, uh, you know, make your argument and establish your research significance, you can then perhaps think of what your research objectives are. Uh, so, and, and this can be written, I think, uh, in point form, which is a common format that I, uh, most of you probably have been uh, asked to do, but only because it's clearer and it's more sort of like structured. Uh, in, if you, you have three objectives, you write three points, right? Uh, but it can also be written as a purpose statement, right? Uh, in a prose format. 
uh, that's also possible. So, or a combination of both. So you can start off in a prose and then do your sort of like listing of three points and then uh, conclude with a prose or any other sort of like combination that you can think of. Uh, but the purpose is for you to sort of then clarify the broader research goal, uh, goal uh, uh, and, and use terms like, uh, you know, to expose, to explore, investigate, experiment, to, uh, you know, to analyze. All these terms are useful to help us to understand what are you trying to sort of like do in your research itself. Uh, and last but not least, uh, in your research objective, it's always important to remember that the objectives or the goals itself should lead to the research questions, uh, which is the next one. It doesn't have to directly correspond with the research questions, but it needs, the research questions actually need to uh, be related to your research objectives. It needs to ask all the things that you want to uh, consider in your research objectives, right? So uh, they're not really, research questions are not really statements then. Uh, they help us to unpack the research problem in, in, in the way that uh, uh, they should be structured uh, in, with, with an order in mind that allows us to build up knowledge in a systematic way. Uh, so think of how a question uh, should uh, be leading to the next question uh, rather than think of them as a discrete set of questions that are uh, independent from each other. Uh, so uh, it is advisable really to limit your thesis to three to four questions max. In fact, three is even a lot already, right? Uh, the purpose of a thesis is really to go deep, not to go broad. So even if you want to be expansive, if you want to be ambitious, uh, it needs a kind of like that. So uh, limiting your thesis to uh, a smaller pool of questions actually uh, forces you to also limit the scope of your thesis, right? When you do the limitation and delimitation, you will have a, a, then you start to sort of like realize, okay, the things that I'm not going to sort of like touch on, it's not going to be uh, things that I'm looking at, uh, I'm going to sort of like focus on this, I'm going to work with this material, no matter how little archival material I have, as opposed to, you know, if on the topic itself, probably there's a lot of things, but maybe on the thesis or the issue that I want to raise on, there's only this small pool of stuff that I can work on, then it forces you to actually go deep into even that small pool of archival or in, uh, source material that you, you, that, that you have to deal with, uh, rather than uh, uh, fall into a habit where you're just sort of like pulling things in and, 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 and fluffing up uh, uh, the thesis that then uh, that will then risk becoming something that is uh, a bit too descriptive. Okay, uh, so uh, maybe another thing to remember is that research questions can, cor can possibly correspond, cor correspond with the chapters in a research project and provide the organizing frameworks for specific chapters. But this is not necessarily the, necessarily the case. Uh, this is something that uh, you, you can possibly consider. Uh, so not, uh, I think most people don't take this approach as well, but if you find that you need some kind of like structure in understanding uh, where, you're, where you're taking your research and the achievability of your sort of like research project, maybe, Framing your research question and how and, and uh, relating it to uh, the uh, specific sort of like chapters that you will eventually work on is a good way to uh, at least uh, have a systematic way to spell out what you're addressing in each chapter in, in each subsequent chapter. Okay, uh, but uh, I think uh, I don't think this is something that is so um, uh, specific to. Uh, our cohort, uh, I, none of you really sort of would have uh, fallen into this sort of like trap of circular reasoning, but I uh, guess now a lot of us also sort of like co-teach methodologies. Uh, we find that uh, some of the students do actually sort of like uh, uh, tend to uh, adopt um, uh, uh, a much more, uh, what do you call that? A much more prescriptive sort of like view of doing research, right? Uh, 
Uh, so they come in as social scientists thinking that they want to sort of like save the world and they have recommendations to make and that their thesis has like, you know, uh, a social sort of like good and writing the thesis itself that you can make certain recommendations uh, to solve the world sort of like problem. Uh, very often this leads to a pattern of sort of like thinking that is called circular reasoning. Uh, 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 and, and like this is a good example here of like if you, you know, if you propose the following topic uh, or the following thesis, the problem with the decline of interest in traditional craft is that there's no effort to promote appreciation of awareness. Uh, stating something like this uh, is it will lead to really an inevitable, an inevitable sort of like outcome, right? It, need, it, it suggests that the need is really for the promoting of appreciation awareness and that the objective is to create initiatives to promote appreciation of awareness. And then your method is to plan for the promotion of appreciation awareness. And your evaluation is that whether there are efforts or not to promote appreciation or awareness. And this type of example of your research problem often fails the so what test. The problem doesn't show relevance of why you're investigating the topic. Uh, it doesn't elucidate or it doesn't spell out clearly the significance of why one should study the fact that there's no effort to promote the appreciation of awareness. And the research problem doesn't even offer an intellectual pathway towards understanding, uh, you know, but towards adding new knowledge or clarifying prior knowledge. Someone somewhere else, probably in Africa, would have done the same research project. And that would have been a much more interesting kind of like research project because maybe in that context, there's really no effort to sort of like promote appreciation of awareness uh, in a war-torn sort of like country. Those kind of like research has been done. And those new, no the, those knowledge that has been sort of like created would have been more useful than uh, the, 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 the kind of like prescriptive recommendations that you would make. Uh, if you, you would sort of like frame uh, your thesis in this way. Uh, so be very careful of simply sort of like uh, uh, stating that, uh, that the research problem is really the absence of the thing that you're suggesting. Uh, I think that's, that's, a, a, that's a, a dangerous sort of like path to go. Like. It's not that it's not doable. It, uh, a lot of the time it doesn't encourage the kind of critical thinking uh, that we hope you uh, will be getting to writing a thesis. Uh, uh, of course, if this is something that you want to work on, you can uh, work on this, but you need to then again uh, demonstrate that kind of like level of reflexiveness and criticality that would in fact uh, uh, actually highlight uh, uh, all these sort of like problematics and issues and how we frame and understand appreciation and awareness. Okay. Uh, and lastly, um, uh, so uh, all, having done all of that, you would have perhaps then sort of like, you know, you have to work out your theoretical framework or research approach, your methods of approach, your limitations and delimitation, and then your literature review. Uh, but uh, and normally you would have, I don't know, a Gdan chart or something at the end. Uh, or research plan chart, uh, any kind of like chart. Like I think students are more, uh, creative these days, they don't use Gantt chart anymore. Uh, so uh, the different students use different types of like charts that they find. Uh, and then, uh, but I, I, and then you conclude with your bibliography. But I like to sort of like introduce uh, the option of including a chapter outline and conclusion uh, uh, as a way to sort of like wrap up your, your, your proposal, right? Uh, I, I, I see benefits in, in that principally uh, because I think uh, when you sort of like create chapter outlines, it helps readers to understand your research design better and gauge the achievability of your research. Uh, so it also is an opportunity for you to test yourself if your project is achievable, right? Uh, so it's simply by spelling you know, out what your chapter outline is, and it could just be as simple as, you know, 
uh, in the following chapter, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rely. I'm going to use uh, statistics that I've sort of like gathered about museum visitorship uh, in order to uh, understand uh, what is the sort of like demographic of uh, visitors that uh, you know that, that entered the museum from this period to this period, a particular time. This is important because I will then sort of like also then apply some you know, qualitative analysis to understand. Uh, 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 to identify or pick out uh, uh, specific interesting kind of like uh, reports that highlight uh, uh, strange and unusual sort of like forms of encounters with artifacts. Uh, this will then allow me to sort of like do this, uh, this and this. And that's one. Th then that sort of like shows, okay, the next chapter I'm going to work on this. And then following with the following, then you, then you say, then in the, in the third chapter, I'm going to sort of like do this. And again, repeat the process of spelling out what your methodology is, what your data is where your possible data is, how you're going to sort of like find them and what you hope to sort of like achieve out of them. Uh, so in many ways, the outline itself is almost like a repetition of all your, the, the, your, your big sort of like proposal uh, with all your problem, your methods, your, uh, your, 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 your methods, your data, you're spelling out your sort of like theory, your methods, your data, and then giving an evidential sort of like demonstration that, you know, this is something that, uh, uh, that you can potentially sort of like look at and that you actually have uh, uh, an example to also show uh, already that this is uh, what you're going to be looking at uh, in your subsequent chapters. And finally, uh, having spelled out all that, it's always nice to, I guess, conclude with uh, either a few paragraphs or even just a paragraph that summarizes the key takeaways of your thesis in different words. So uh, what the concluding paragraph or paragraphs do is that it helps to reinforce the significance of the research and really bring some kind of like closure to your proposal. Uh, and it's also an opportunity to really discover, I guess, different ways that you will eventually have to be comfortable with uh, in relaying the information uh, and your thesis to other people again. So uh, uh, you can consider, for example, uh, 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 a creative way of sort of like doing a closure, uh, whether you can close with a visual analysis of a close reading uh, of some, a, a cultural object uh, to leading to your problem statement thesis or research significance. You could pose a set of questions uh, that of course, these are rhetorical questions that you are going to answer anyway <laughs> by sort of like using this as an opportunity to then reinforce <laughs> your problem statement pieces and significance of research or you can in, in different words or you can describe an experience related to the topic uh, i remember for my phd i i think i ended with um uh oh yeah a, a personal experience in a museum or what i saw an object that i found really fascinating that was tacked on to his, uh, the window of a museum. Uh, so, and using that to telescope uh, into uh, my interest in looking at, uh, uh, I guess, uh, social historical narratives of, uh, of culture, right, uh, across South Asia. Uh, so that's one way to sort of like bring a very personal experience uh, and relate to the topic and use that to then sort of like reinforce your problem statement of thesis or significance. Or you can open with a narrative to set the scene. Uh, or actually here, close with the narrative to set a scene, or state a counter argument, right? Uh, something that is uh, a prevalent view of, on the topic, or, uh, you know, maybe uh, some big uh, uh, hotshot intellectual you're trying to take down uh, with a specific sort of like uh, understanding of the topic that, uh, uh, that you want to unpack. So, uh, and, and has, has a, perhaps something that is very, uh, a view that is very influential that, uh, that, that you're challenging in your thesis. Uh, and that, that way stating the counter argument could be very productive because then it helps sort of like frames and bring into sharper relief why your, why your thesis is important. What original sort of like knowledge you are producing through this research, okay? Uh, so that's, um, the conclusion uh, section. And after all of this, this is when we go back and revisit. Uh, uh, oh, so you know, okay, 
so uh, so this is my sort of like summary and conclusion uh, with all good problem statements perhaps we can think of problem statements as offering a way to understand the topic compellingly uh, uh, more interestingly I think it supports and brings brings out the multiple perspectives uh, uh, on a particular topic for discussion uh, it also shows whether a research topic is researchable or not and the thesis itself that you're arguing is researchable or not and it offers some kind of original insight but these are sort of like big value statements that help you to uh, get a sense of why, why what, what makes it sort of like good problem statement uh. but to anchor some of these things maybe what you can ask uh, uh, the questions that uh, I've, um, I've sort of like you know uh, typed out here uh, and uh, namely like uh, really identify what issues are that you hope to bring to attention about the topic of your study the context itself and specifying what the context is uh, uh, and situate uh, this, uh, un your understanding of the topic in relation to both a knowledge gap as well as uh, uh, how your work is going to be addressing these gaps, okay? Uh, and then uh, uh, when we say hypothesis is really what is the argument that you're trying to make? What is the thesis you're trying to make here? A hypothesis is the stage where you haven't sort of like proved your thesis. Lah. So when you finish your thesis, it's a thesis. Uh, in, a, in a proposal, then it, uh, it's normally, uh, it's still in a state that is called a hypothesis, meaning that you still have yet to sort of like proven that, uh, that your argument is sort of like valid and you have yet to sort of like supply it with all the evidences that you have gathered, uh, right? Uh, so it's still in the hypothesis stage. Yeah. So, but what is this argument that you're trying to make? And once you sort of like state that argument, you would also have state a position uh, and it is from that position that you, 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 you're forced to then marshal all the different evidences in order to support that position that you're trying to make. Okay? Uh, and here are some suggestions of what, what forms of hypothesis, uh, what forms hypothesis can sort of like take. Okay? Uh, and then there is then you need to supply some evidences, uh, what are the source, or at least identify what are the source materials that you want to use to test your hypothesis. And finally, a nice way to sort of conclude is then to uh, think of what are the broader implications of your research, okay? And uh, answer to the significance of your uh, research in, uh, in a, answer it sincerely, uh, and answer it in a, a, a way that is meaningful to you and, to, and honest to yourself too, okay? Uh, uh, finally, we, after all this sort of like roundabout way, we end up with the introduction. So really the beginning is the end. Uh, uh, you know, that famous El uh, T.S. Eliot sort of like uh, uh, poem, uh, you know, you go one big round and finally at the end, you've arrived at the beginning. And, really, and, and the introduction is something that normally people write all the way at the end. Uh, I like introductions to be direct. Uh, 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 you know, if it's especially at the thesis level, if it's in a publication stage, then maybe uh, you can be more creative or inventive. But at the thesis stage, I think it'd be always, it's always nice if you're reading a thesis to know what exactly the thesis is about. So I like thesis to be, uh, you know, uh, you know this uh, this thesis is, uh, you know, in this thesis I'm exploring this 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 this. this. So state out clearly what you are. Uh, what your thesis topic is uh, before you sort of like share the background of your research rather than sort of like do the background before you sort of go to, okay, I'm going to actually investigate this small thing within the context of Malaysian art. Uh, uh, right. Uh, so uh, sometimes like, I, I don't know why uh, students have trouble identifying or, or going straight and addressing their thesis topic directly. Uh, and, and would sort of do the background before they go to their thesis topic. But uh, it actually creates a lot of um, uh, confusion or, uh, for, for the reader because they're not able, you know, they take, they, they'll take time to actually sort of like figure out what are you actually interested in studying. Uh, uh, alternatively, maybe you can also consider uh, um, different kinds of like approaches 
that could be adopted. That, that, uh, that, and these approaches are the ones that I have also suggested for your conclusion, right? So you can always begin with questions. You can always begin with visual analysis or close reading. You can always do a contrast of thing of uh, or comparison of two different views of perspective on a topic uh, to set up like uh, the kind of debate, uh, right? The, the, the scope of the debates around a particular topic or understanding of a particular topic. Or you can also use your personal experience to relate to the topic or, or set up a narrative or uh, uh, like a story to help us to understand uh, what is the sort of like um, backdrop in which you can then sort of situate your topic in. Uh, so and this is very different from say doing a sort of like background to your topic, right? Uh, you wouldn't sort of like uh, spell out the entire sort of like history of uh, modern Malaysian art before you go you, before you zoom in specifically to look at maybe women artists in the 1950s. Uh, uh, but if you have a narrative in this sense, then maybe you, uh, it, it's about tracking the life of uh, uh, the friendship of two women artists in the 1950s and how their sort of like life story over the course of the 1950s could provide an interesting sort of like backdrop to understand why maybe personal lives and narratives or life story is important as a source to understand uh, the emergence of sort of like modern art from a gender perspective. So, or uh, another example, another sort of like way to begin your introduction is to state a counter argument before you even to your own, which is really the take down mode. Lah. If you have someone that you really don't like, but you want to, you know, uh, elbow him or her in a very civil manner, in an intellectual manner, you sort of like then take on the. Uh, you, you adopt the counter argument sort of like mode. But uh, pretty much then, uh, 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 really, this is, these are things that for you to consider uh, uh, after you have done all of these things, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, so after you've done all of these things is then revisit the introduction. And uh, I think uh, you also find it easier to write the introduction once you have uh, everything sort of like uh, written, uh, uh, that will sort of like, then the introduction is really just a process of flashing out and giving uh, an entry point into your research uh, proposal. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Um, uh, does anyone have any question? Is that clearer? Uh, maybe I can start with Clarissa. Since you yeah. Um, yes, I think it's quite clear what you what your outlined there. So thank you for taking the time to put this presentation together. Um, do you have any questions, or maybe uh, do you want to? I think I relate I, to specific things that you're working through. Um, <laughs> I think what I wanted to hear a bit more about, maybe perhaps, is the. Um, difference between problem statement and significance of research. Okay. Uh, like, I know a lot of the things might be, rep so problem statement is like identifying a knowledge gap, identifying a problem, right? And then I would say, then the significance of research is like, is also identifying yeah. uh, to, to show that the problem is very important, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, so how, how would you navigate between the two? Well, I mean, actually in a lot of, um, uh, a lot of pieces and a lot of other templates, they are one and the same. You, it, one leads to another. So I think uh, I'm trying to also understand uh, if, if Gigi sort of like decides to separate them, then maybe it's a case of making it clearer that you need to identify two different sort of like points, uh, like these two sort of like, uh, these two sort of like uh, issues, right, in your, in your proposal. Uh, but um, maybe uh, one way to think of significance is uh, what is the real, what's the implication of sort of like your research project is, uh, uh, is it going to sort of like change? Uh, is it really sort of like uh, 
putting forward a very different way to understand uh, topic. And so the problem statement would be, you know, that there is a very specific or fixed way to sort of like, you know, a conventional way in which uh, we understand the topic and the significant, which would then lead you to sort of like do the research project, state your thesis statement, and then argue that the significance of your thesis is therefore trying to sort of like introduce a very different way to understand the topic uh, that no one else has done before, something like that. I see. It's, it's a bit interesting. Uh, uh, or you can be more also uh, 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 introspective. Uh, I, 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 um, yeah, in, in a way that uh, does it then sort of like uh, changes your own personal sort of like view of what doing research is, uh, right? Uh, does doing this research then teach you something about uh, collaboration within a research project that then sort of challenges conventional way of sort of like doing what doing humanities research is. Those kinds of things can be sort of like brought in for discussion at a, at a significant sort of like level. Uh, I think the more important thing is just to simply be honest uh, rather than relying on the formulaic answer. Right, mm. I got it. Mm. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, uh, or maybe we, was this covered already in um, methods? Or it's just good to constantly have like different uh, forms of reinforcement? Is it? Um, mm, I think how you have presented is it feels less rigid than what yeah. Dr. Gigi has uh, explained. Uh, it, like I don't know, I don't know why that I feel how Dr. Gigi explains gives me a sense of like fear. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess she's also teaching a bigger class, and I I tend to feel like well, I've been teaching methods this this semester too, and it feels like. Especially when I go in and doing, uh, when we're doing co-teaching, I also don't have an understanding of what the student population is, and I cannot gauge, like, what their response uh, might be. I and I, I appreciate. I think I appreciate how GG is very structured, mm. and although that would also mean more rigidity, la. Yeah, yeah. And and on the other hand, you are like. Yeah, sort of goes. total opposite. <laughs> yes, I'm like, you know, like both both are equally important, uh, but and then actually they complement each other. So I think it would be a good idea to actually co-teach. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've been doing co-teaching this semester. Like all of us have to sort of like teach the methodology. Uh, but yeah, in a way that maybe at, uh, in the initial stage, it's good to uh, familiarize yourself with the structure, but always remember that it's just a structure, right? Mm -hmm. And there are also many, many different ways that people have sort of like structured their thesis. Uh, but the, really, even for Gigi, that is so, uh, such a stickler to, you know, a kind of like template. Ultimately, what she wants to look out for is that uh, it makes sense, the thesis makes sense, that you are doing all your sort of like justification, that your uh, argument yeah. is, it makes sense, and that's all we're looking for. Mm. Uh, that you're able to sort of like clearly demonstrate uh, uh, the viability of your research project and at the sort of like candidature phase is that you actually have something interesting to sort of like say. I see. Yeah. I'm sorry, Simon, I have to go. Mm. Okay, Thank no you. worries. Have a yeah. Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh my god. And a happy new year. <laughs> oh it's scary. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, Dennis. Bye, Claire. Bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Structure is is one of the strengths. And it, it, it's a really sort of like a good thing to sort of have, you know, uh, to have a bit more sort of like discipline and rigidity. But uh, yeah which is something I never have, right? So I, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, and I, I go about my research very, very intuitively as well. <laughs> I tend to be a very intuitive sort of like thinker. Uh, 
so there is sort of like good and bad lah approach, and I guess uh, you really just have to sort of like figure out, uh, um, yeah, w what suits you. But more importantly, uh, uh, I, I think the important thing is then sort of like communicating, uh, having the uh, like you know developing a kind of like confidence to communicate uh, your thinking process. In sharing with everyone, I think that's the more, more important thing because we are all thinking about these things in our head. It's more about uh, our confidence in actually expressing it um, and making it visible uh, on paper. Right? We're always uh, quite fearful that you know, once you commit something onto a paper, then if it's there, uh, people are gonna read it. What if I change? Uh, like, what if you know, I don't think like this anymore? Uh, you know, how's that going to? Uh, uh, you know, I don't want people to see that, but I don't think you have to be worried about it. It's also a good record of uh, for your 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 future self of how much you have grown as a sort of like researcher. I cannot look at that in my old work, but whenever I look back at my old work, there are parts where I just cringe, but there are also parts that make me go like, "Wow, okay, I actually thought of these issues before," uh, and that's an interesting way to understand the problem that I probably. Would not have thought of it that way at this current stage. Uh, so it, uh, um, think of writing as having that sort of like generosity for you to have that conversation with your your own sort of like yeah uh, thinking process. You uh, does anyone uh, have any other questions, uh, Jen? Uh, Excuse me. Yeah, hi. I have one question to ask. Uh, I want to ask what, uh, the uh, when I want to write the identification, which uh, which chapter should I uh, which part should I put it in the? What's the ident identification? Uh, de definition. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> definition. Definition of. Yeah. Uh, what, the definition of what? The uh, definition of uh, of my top uh, of the uh, maybe the, my term uh, my term or I want to uh, give it a definition. Which part should I? Yeah. Uh, and how yeah. should I write a definition? Uh, actually, that's a really good question. So um, normally, maybe you can consider writing definitions in your introduction and background. So lay it out um, mm. uh, already, you know, if you're talking about, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, Kung Pi Hua, right? What is the definition of Kung Pi, all those yeah. things? I guess those, those are the background information that people will need. You, you, you mean put in the background of the yeah. information, right? Yeah. Background, background part. Background, but don't forget mm. to problematize those definitions. You mean? There's no fixed definition of Kung Pi. There's no one author in this world that has a correct definition of what Kung Pi is. You're going to yeah. be 10 authors, yes. there's going to be 10 different definitions. So don't forget to yeah. optimize it like by introducing multiple perspectives. And that's why doing the problem statement is important because you're trying to then evaluate what are some of these definitions that's been advanced and what you're able to sort of like see that tells you something different about Kung Pi as a kind of like genre. Uh, uh, so don't just sort of like uh, latch on to a definition that someone else has made and then take it for authority uh, as an authoritative without actually questioning why you think that that is an authoritative definition or why you think that's a definition that's suitable. Yeah, uh, like why, why is that suitable to your reading of sort of like Kung Pi? What does it reveal about uh, Kung Pi as a genre? Uh, those those things you need to really work through, lah. Uh, uh, right, yeah. So uh, yeah, thanks for raising that. I think that's very very good to at least highlight where to put the definition and always reminding ourselves that every definitions we make, we have to evaluate those definitions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, I got that. Great. Uh, Jen asks, "Are we not?" But I have a question about hypothesis. Are we actually allowed to post a hypothesis in the proposal? 
uh, we're not to do that, we're not science-based research. Well, in this context, it's called, uh, I mean, the, the word I use is hypothesis, but really, if you look at the question, it's an argument that you're trying to make. Right, so focus on not so much the terminology, but what is the argument that you're sort of like trying to make in your study? You still need to take a position. You still need to have something to actually say about the topic. You cannot just list down the topic. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a, that's a thesis, right? Uh, and then you have to use the rest of the thesis to spell out why you think so. Uh, rather than it's just about uh, the topic is just on CPM sort of like data, then you're actually saying something about CPM sort of like data and how communication sort of like is understood, uh, how data is understood as a sort of like form of communication uh, that uh, is two way, right? It's, it's multiple sort of like a way form of communication. And then you have to go ahead and then marshal evidences to prove that. Hi, Simon. I got, I got something to ask. Hello, Simon? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you go to your second slide? Yeah. Fine. So, I just want to ask uh, about conclusion five. The what? Conclusion. Yeah. When we reach to the conclusion uh, chapter, uh, can I? Can we also, you know, conclude each of the uh, point here? Sorry, what? what? The, we conclude uh, what are the theory framework that we use, the research objectives, statement of the problem, the significance. We conclude all the points, and then at the same time, we also uh, explain what the other uh, research gap that we can further the study. Okay, uh, I guess what I've, we are talking about conclusion in general, uh, your conclusion of your thesis or conclusion of your thesis proposal. Yeah, okay, so, so what I mean is, uh, can we also explain, uh, the, for example, the methods of approach? Yeah. You, you don't have to go into specific but you just have to sort of, uh, you know, re uh, reinforce the fact that, okay, this is what I'm studying, the benefits of, or the significance of why I'm studying this, how I'm going to sort of like approach it. Uh, yes, you can bring in the methods. Uh, you can say that these are the sort of like key methods I use and stuff like that. Uh, and, and, and what is the main argument that you're trying to make? But rephrase it in, a different, in different words rather than use back the same words so that you reinforce the point again and offer a different sort of like, uh, uh, a different sort of like manner in which people can understand your project. Yeah. Means we can, we can also improve with our findings. Uh, you can, that because we can also include, you can include your findings anyway, anywhere. Uh, you know, you don't have to wait until your, your thesis proper and not to include your findings. You can show your findings already, some of your findings already in your chapter outline, right? So uh, you can even show your findings already in the very opening passage in your introduction where you do a visual analysis on the object. Let's say if you're working on Bajau weaponry and you're looking at a specific sort of like weapon in a museum and you find it problematic to see the object in a museum uh, because it's behind a case and that it's not alive, it's not being used, you know, it's just displayed and uh, it doesn't, it's not animated by a kind of like social life that gives value and meaning to the work. The meaning has been transformed and changed in a museum context where it sits behind a vitrine. Uh, that, uh, so in order to uh, understand what is the sort of like social life or the social world surrounding the, the Bajau weaponry itself, it prompts you to sort of like do that. Already you're drawing on sort of like Findings, right? If you were to sort of like, you know, start off with a narrative of your personal experience and use that as a way to introduce, and introduce, uh, like, you know, use that as a way to sort of like lead the reader into your uh, research uh, statement problem, significance of research and research objective. 
so I, you, it's not methodical. I, my, my, I think my, 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 my main point is that you, uh, you don't have to think of it as so sort of like structure. Think of it as like a, like a, like a, like a, like something that you, like a text that, you know, uh, allows people to sort of like engage with your ideas from multiple perspectives, from different sort of like points. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but I, 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 yeah, it's not always so sort of like structured as you want to, but you put your evidences or findings here. It's not like a science report. A humanities sort of like thesis is not a science report. It's like you don't have to dump all your sort of like uh, a particular type of information here, and then you do the analysis, and then you write the conclusion. It's that people, you can be very creative about how you sort of like approach narrative. But the most important thing is that the narrative has to make sense and that you have to sort of like show argument and justify your argument and explain and, and, and analyze. And the analytical, the interpretive sort of like component is a key thing, right? That you need to demonstrate in any of these sort of like categories. Okay, uh, is that clear? I, I don't know if that helps because I, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I can suggest that maybe you shouldn't put your findings here, you shouldn't put your findings there, but I think that has created uh, maybe some challenges for you in terms of yeah. uh, how you have structured it. Uh, and maybe that way of sort of like, you know, creating a structure or an organ, like a, a structure for a thesis doesn't work. You, doesn't really quite work because then you're, you're always uh, uh, thinking, okay, I can put this information later. And then when uh, 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 you know, a panelist asks you, you know, why are you not talking about this now? You're saying, oh, it's later. It's always later, right? So think of findings as already something that you can almost demonstrate even in your introduction itself because you already have the information to pull it back. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, any other questions? If not, then uh, I think that's it for me, uh, really. I, I'll, I'll send this on uh, WhatsApp to everyone. Uh, but otherwise, how's everyone doing? What are you guys doing for Christmas?